R.M. Williams say that this boot is true to their heritage, crafted for comfort, translating easily to more formal attire. It's also billed as unisex. So there, maybe I'll get more than my usual 5% of female viewers. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajit people. If you're a woman watching this review, welcome, and I know at least 5% of you are, then let me tell you a secret. On the RM Williams website, link below, this Macquarie boot is in the men's section, but it's labelled unisex. But if you go to the women's page, you won't see it. The closest you get to something that looks like this is the Erica or the Adelaide, but not really because one has a chisel toe and the other's a bit shorter. So if you like this style, you need to buy it from the man's page. So RM Williams, why unisex? I suppose because most of the men's models, despite being narrowly sleek, they mostly have uh, rounder toes or more chisel shapes, and this one is clearly a tapered almond toe. It's dressy and sexy. First and foremost, it is of course a Chelsea boot. No laces, uh, held onto your feet more snugly than say a cowboy boot by the shape of the instep and the elastic goring panels. If you've been watching my videos and caught my reviews of different Chelsea boots like this uh, early video of mine of the RM Williams Gardener up here, you will remember that the elastic sided riding boot was invented by Queen Victoria's bootmaker for her and then patented by him a few years later uh, when vulcanized rubber was invented. Uh, they were taken up in the early 1900s by the rich Chelsea set as a fashionable riding boot, uh, and then again by the Beatles and other swinging 60s pop groups who favoured the world's end part of the King's Road in Chelsea. Hence the Chelsea boot name came into being. Already used as a working and riding boot in Australia since the 1930s, Variations are now made in Australia as work and fashion boots. It is immediately recognisable as a mid-height boot with no laces and these elastic side panels uh, known as goring. They can be quite chunky, like a blundstone. Uh, see the review up here. But as in this case, they can also be very sleek and very dressy. As a sleekly shaped Chelsea boot, it can be dressed up nicely, especially with that tapered toe. Personally, I would not normally wear suede with a suit, even if it's black. But I think in this case, I probably would. The slim last and tapered toe box allows it to sit under a, a black or a grey suit, I think, without screaming, oh, suede is a casual material. <laughs> However, I think it looks best with an all black casual outfit. I have a black shirt that I like wearing with this, with black jeans and a suede or nubuck black jacket. But it's versatile. I think you can also pair it with dark denim so it's not clashing with light denim, plus a neutral shirt like say green or blue or brown. Uh, throw on a jacket in similar colours and you're set. As for the brand RM Williams, I've done quite a few reviews of their boots now, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but for the benefit of people who haven't watched my reviews, here are the highlights. It was founded in 1932. Uh, by a stockyard labourer called Reginald Murray Williams, who learned about leatherworking, uh, started making saddles, and then found his elastic-sided boots very popular with other mustering ringers and pastoralists. His first permanent workshop is still celebrated by having its address still embroidered into their pull tabs. It's now a company museum. Growing the company, uh, including expanding into clothing in the 1960s, RM continued the expansion throughout Australia in the 1970s and the 80s, including into offices and boardrooms during the booming late 80s. In 1988, RM sold the business and the new owners expanded into the uh, international market. Through the 90s, international expansion continued and even Bill Clinton wore a pair, maybe while smoking a cigar. RM himself died in 2003 and was given a state funeral. Since then, the company has gone through a number of different owners, from uh, the dreaded private equity firms to luxury international brands, and in 2020 was uh, brought back into 100% Australian hands when it was bought by West Aussie iron ore mining billionaire Twiggy Forrest. 
All of your boots have always been made in Australia, but their clothing and accessories have been made overseas. Since 2020, they have started to bring all manufacturing back to Australia. It is now squarely known as a luxury brand, with their boots selling here in Australia for the mid 600s and above in Aussie dollars. And I believe in the uh, high 500s overseas in US dollars. The payback for that luxury title and pricing is the usually top quality control of their boots and the fact that uh, all their Chelsea boots are hole cut, meaning they're made from one piece of leather with only one seam up the back. So now let's take a look at the construction. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. So this is a Goodyear welted boot, meaning that the uppers are attached to the sole construction via a welt. This is a 270 degree welted boot, meaning that the welt goes uh, around the front three quarters of the boot rather than all the way around. Now let's break that up a little bit. A welt is a thin strip of leather uh, and it is sewn on its inside edge to the insole and the turned in uppers on the inside of the boot. Then the outside edge of the welt is stitched uh, through the welt, uh, through the outsole, uh, so that you can see the stitches in the outsole. So one stitch is on the inside and does not penetrate the outsole, and one stitch is on the outside and does not penetrate into the boot. In this way, it's said to be more water resistant than uh, Blake stitch footwear, where the stitch goes through the inside of the boot and through to the outsole. A Goodyear welted boot is resolable because your cobbler, or uh, if you send it to RM Williams's repair workshop, they can cut the outside stitches and remove the outsole and then simply replace it and glue and restitch it all back on. Uh, if the welt only goes around the front three quarters of the boot, what happens at the back, you might ask? The back is securely glued and then nailed on so that the heels are attached by glues and nails. The supposed reason for not welting the back end is that it makes for a dressy line. You know, it's a really fine line uh, down the back of the boot. There's a clean line down through and past the heel. I have also heard commentary that it's easier to insert a solid heel counter without a welt there uh, because you can simply slip in a leather heel counter. The outsole itself is a proprietary all resistant rubber outsole, RM's own Longhorn logo on it. Looking closely at the layers, the rubber outsole is at the bottom. I don't believe this has a midsole similar to the Iron Ranger. And then on top of that is the welt, uh, which sits at the top edge. It's not strictly necessary to have a midsole, particularly if you have a thick enough outsole. Not having one makes your boot lighter and more flexible, but it also means that you have to be careful not to wear through the outsole before you take it to the cobbler, because if you do, you'll immediately hit and wear out the, the uh, cork fillers or foam fillers and the insole, which is bad. At the heel, to even out the level of the welt uh, to the heel, there is a heel rand. The heel itself has a rubber top lift, uh, several stacks of leather. They've been known to use leather board, but these are, I'm pretty sure, leather. Uh, and then the full length of the rubber outsole slips in above the heel stacks below the rand. Inside the boot, to fit the, uh, uh, the well that's formed by the welt going around the edge, RM have been known to use cork or rubber, depending on when they were made. Uh, the insole inside the boot is a leather or leatherboard insole, again, depending on when they were made and it's topped by a heavy foam or pour-on layer on top of the insole to make it the comfort version. Uh, if I push my hand inside and I feel the edge, I can actually feel two densities. There is the giving foam and then a hard edge at the, at the edges, which I presume to be the leather insole that's actually stitched to the welt. On top of the heel is a padded cloth sock liner. It's a very, very small piece. The boot is fully lined with glove leather, very soft in the vamp and front of the shaft, but in a different and thicker leather in the heel and back of the shaft. The heel counter and toe puff, uh, this might be uh, leather, I think this is thermoplastic. The stitching is always good in RM boots. The double stitching around the elastic goring is very fine, very precise. The stitch up the back seam is very tight and clean. There are two signature pull loops sewn firmly to the collar. The upper suede used at this time, I know to be from Charles F. Stead in the UK, famous for making the best suede in the world. It's not especially thick, less than two millimeters. Now, suede is a split leather. 
A hide is split into two split layers, the top half being the full grain that then gets processed into other smooth grain layers, and the bottom half, which is lightly sanded to produce a short, uh, soft nap as suede. You can immediately know stayed suede when you feel it. Short nap, yet soft and very giving. In black, it partly hides a lot of sins, but it sure picks up uh, light dust and dirt and shows it off. Which comes to brushing. To keep, to keep uh, suede clean, and certainly to keep it looking clean in black, you do need to brush suede quite often. People say, I do not do this, but people say to brush after every wear. To do this, you use a suede brush, either one like this, with thick bristles, or one like this, with uh, copper wire bristles on one side and then rubber stubbles on the other. Uh, use the brush to first brush off loose dirt, sand, dust, all that sort of thing, and then if it's clean, you brush it again to raise the nap the right way. That's usually all it takes, but if you've picked up some staining or oil or whatever, you can use the back of this brush and gently try to brush it off with the rubber stubbles. Or you can use a suede eraser. I think technically this is called a suede cleaner bar. But look at it. <laughs> it's an eraser. Exactly the same as you used to use in school if you're old enough to have you know, written things into exercise books instead of typing them out into your computer or tablet. You literally rub off as much stain as you can before you uh, brush it off again and re-raise the nap. On particularly stubborn spots, you can use a gentle suede foam cleaner or a spray cleaner like the one RM uh, Williams sells, where you spray it onto a clean cloth and then you rub it over the spot. Do not settle soap, big mistake. Once clean, you can protect uh, the suede with a spray-on waterproofing product like Tarago's Nano Spray or Sophia's Invulna Spray or a product like RM Suede Protector. Before I talk about how to size the RM Williams Macquarie, I first need to talk about uh, the design of lasts and about an important measurement of your feet. First, about the last. I know when some of you look at this toe box, you are going to feel that ghost pain of remembered boots that squeezed your toes. If you do remember those boots, it is my firm belief that you were either sized wrong or those were cheap shoes that used a crappy last. A last is uh, that foot-shaped mold around which the leather is pulled around to make the shape of the boot uh, that, that actually looks exactly like uh, the boot itself. Tapered narrow last equals tapered narrow boots. Chunky wide round toe last means clown shoes. A really well-designed last can give you comfort despite a narrow toe box. I mean, think about it. Half the world cannot possibly be going around wearing a boot that was intentionally designed to squeeze your toes. A well-designed tapered almond toe last will suit the width of your feet, but be lengthened so that as the toe starts to taper, it tapers beyond where a shorter chunky toe last starts to taper. It leaves room for your little toes further back from the end of the boot. So a last of a boot like these Macquarie's, when compared to say the same size round toe service boot, will be longer. You will have more than the recommended thumb's width between your toes and the end of the boot. It might only be a few millimeters, but it's enough. The second thing I want you to know is that when you get to know your size, do it on a Brannock device, not off what you wear in sneakers. Apart from the width of your feet, a Brannock device will measure two lengths of your feet, the full heel to toe length and the heel to ball length. That's the right length between your heel and the widest part of your feet, which is where your knuckle joint is, which is where your feet naturally flex. In most cases, the lengths measure the same. In some, like me, the ball is millimeters longer than heel to toe. In 99% of boot lasts, this doesn't make a difference, but in RMs, I, I, I find most of their lasts so slim that it does make a difference. So to sizing these, I measure US 8.5 heel to toe on the Brannock and marginally more heel to ball, but doesn't make enough of a difference to the number, I'm still 8.5. I am average width, which in US terms is a D width. RM Williams is a UK size brand, so UK sizing is one down from US. That means, true to size, I should take a UK 7.5 in average width in these RMs. RM's average width, by the way, is the G letter, not the D letter. However, 
Because of the sleekness of their lasts and the slightly extra length of my ball to foot measurement, I find I size much better as an RM Williams UK 8G. So for me, I go a half size up in the same width. The millimeters extra length does not cause a problem because they are snug enough across the instep in that size. Heel slip? Yeah, but that is to be expected of laceless boots. A broken in heel slip of less than a quarter of an inch, um, just like I'm told cowboy boots will also need. This is a new realization for me. I have for years struggled with why I didn't fit into 7.5G RM Williams boots. It just dawned on me, now I know. My advice to you is to try them on in a store. If you can't, at least know your Brennock size and if you're American, convert that to UK size and despite my example, I would start with true to size first. Now these are an old pair and the current models of the Macquarie are in a soft yearling leather and come in either black or chestnut. From time to time, they will uh, make the suede makeup. The ones on the website are listed at 649 Aussie dollars, the standard price for 90% of their boots without any exotic leathers. Now that's a lot. I vacillate whether they're worth it. On the one hand, they are immaculately made. They are comfortable. They look good. As a pair of Chelsea boots, they're iconic. They are quintessentially Australian. I mean, hell, even the Australian army wore them as parade boots. They compare construction and material exceptionally well with fashion brand cement construction boots selling in stores for you know, up to $300. They actually compare well with American boots imported into Australia once you add on freight, taxes and custom duties. Red Wings, for example, sell for just under $600 uh, uh, Australian. Uh, and mail ordering a pair of Parker's boots, you have to add on the extras to make them about 600 Aussie landed. On the other hand, $649 is half the weekly wage of an office worker, typical office worker. Uh, it's just under a week's average rent for a home in Perth. It's 50 pints of beer for goodness sake. I said at the beginning that RM Williams is now a luxury brand. If you can afford it, it's good value. And I can personally vouch for the fact that their boots last decades. Not many people can afford it though. And certainly not many workers who work on the country unless you own an iron ore mining company. And that my friend is my look into the sexy Chelsea, the RM Williams Macquarie, the closest cousin to a sexy beetle boot I have come across so far. This is close to my favorite RM Williams last and certainly dressier than their uh, work boot shaped lasts and even the craftsman last. Let me know what you think. And I hope you like the information I give in these videos. And if you do, please click on like. And also, if you haven't subbed yet, please click on subscribe down below. I'm getting close to 20,000 subscribers. And if I can get there by February of 2025, which is the third anniversary of the start of my channel, oh, I will be so stoked. So please click on subscribe. Keep watching, mate, and take care, and I'll see you next time.